just going to do a version of mathematics paper one november examinations so this question i took it from 2022 november paper one mathematics national senior certificate final examinations so now 4.1.1 functions and graphs let us just start now sketch below is the graph of h at x equal 1 over x plus p then plus q the asymptotes of h intersect at 1 and 2 very important now guys let's check the graph here ne? and this graph is of para if is of, is of a hyperbola why because it has got two asymptotes the vertical asymptote and the horizontal asymptote again it has got two reflective graphs this one and this one they, they reflect one another ne? yes and again in on its equation has got a fraction form with the value of p and the value of q being our asymptotes ne? now you need to know what are your asymptotes and how do you locate them on the graph and you can see that there's one and two here come on among these two asymptotes they, inter they intersect at one is to two come on among the intersect here the intersect here the coordinates of that point are one and two you must know that ne? 4.1.1 it says that write down the value of p and q write down the value of p and 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 q now you need to recognize from the equation okay what is the value of p and what is the value of q from the equation here the value of p you know could it represents the vertical asymptote okay? and the value of q represents the horizontal asymptote now from the graph between this one and this one which, which one is p and which one is q now i give us about p owner is our vertical come on this one represents the vertical asymptote the value of p so now when this one comes inside the bracket it's going to change the sign from positive to negative come on x minus one not x plus one it, it as it is on the graph so the value of p here is going to be negative one why because the value of p when it comes inside the bracket here is going to change the sign from positive to negative and vice versa Bravo. yes then the value of q remains the same as positive two because of what q owner it is our horizontal asymptote therefore you are done with uh, 4.1.1 so you can literally change it from the equation it's going to be minus one and plus two you are done guys so the value of q always stays the same it does not change the sign only the value of qp changes the sign or when i'm on is negative here is going to be positive and if it was negative here is going to be positive when it comes inside the, the, the fraction for me i hope you are clear on that let us go to the next question 4.1.2 4.1.2 it says that uh, Calculate the coordinates of the x intercept of h. X intercept of h. Now, here h at x owner is equal to 1 over x minus 1 plus 2. You are, they are requiring us to find the coordinates of the x intercept of this function. X intercept, for x intercept, you do what? You let, you let y be 0. And so for x, how much am I going to let y be zero here? It's going to be zero is equals to one over x minus one plus two again. Okay? So solving for x, you are transpose this two to the left. It's going to be zero minus two is negative two, equal to one over x minus one again. Okay? Rather x again. Okay? Our aim here is to, is to break down this fraction again. Okay? You're going to cross multiply one times one, one. Negative two times x minus one again. Okay? It's going to be negative 2 multiplied by x minus 1. I'll break it. Negative 2 times x, negative 2 times negative 1. Again, guys. So, to a negative 2x, negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2, equal to 1. I'm going to transpose this 2 to the left because it's like terms. Again, 1 and 2 are like terms. Therefore, I'm going to transpose this 2 to the left. It's going to be 1 minus 2 is negative, negative, negative 1, equal to negative 2x. I want to be left with x on one side. I'm going to divide both sides by this negative 2. Okay? It's going to be negative 2 on both sides. Negative 2. Therefore, 
x ya wona is equals to 1 over 1 over 2. Okay. Therefore, the coordinates of the x-intercept are 1 over 2 and 0. These are coordinates of our x-intercept. I hope we are clear on that. I hope we are clear on that. 4.1.3, uh, we have answered the question basically. Uh, 4.1.3, it says that uh, write down the co the x coordinates or the x coordinate of the x intercept of g if g at x is equals to h at x plus 3. Now you must write down again the x coordinate very important of the x intercept of g at of g if g at x is equals to h at x plus plus 3. This basically means what you must write. You must find the x-intercept of g. If g at x is equal to h, remember h, 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 h at x plus 3. Come on, someone. This x plus 3, on the very same graph of h, you're going to put it where you see x. Where you see x, we put in x plus 3 to find x-intercept of the new graph of g at x. I hope you had learned that. So this x plus 3, I'm going to put it where I see x. And where after I've put that x plus 3 where I see x on the graph of each at x, I'm going to find the x intercept of g at x. I hope you're clear. So g at x is going to be equal to 1 over x plus 3 minus 1 minus a uh, plus 2. So now what are the x intercept? Therefore, we want x intercept to do what? x intercept. You do what you let y be equal to zero. Therefore, I'm gonna let y be zero here. It's going to be zero is equal to one over. I just want to we want multiply this negative one by x, this negative one again by positive three here. So negative one times x is negative x. Negative one times positive three is negative three plus two here. I want to solve for x. I'm gonna transpose this two to the left. It's gonna be zero minus two is negative two. Negative two is equal to one over negative x minus 3 okay guys then that i'll solve for x i'm gonna cross, I'm, I'm gonna cross multiply here one times one is one then negative two multiplied by negative x minus three that's how you simplify you cross multiply there therefore this negative two multiply the whole bracket again i'm gonna have negative ta negative two times negative x is positive two x negative two times negative three is positive six and your like terms is 6 and 1 are like terms therefore I'm going to take this 6 to the left and give it's going to be 1 minus 6 1 minus 6 is negative negative 5 and give equal to 2x I'm going to be left with x on one side I'm going to divide both sides by 2 by 2 this 2 divide this 2 therefore x is going to be equal to negative 5 over 5 over 2 oh yeah we are done literally we are done guys with this question that's how it's simple it is ne? This is the technique you must apply everywhere. This is the x coordinate of our x intercept of g. This is the x coordinate of our x intercept of graph of g. I hope we are clear on that. 4.1.4 is very simple, Leona. It says that the equation of an x axis of symmetry of h is y equal to x plus t. Again, determine the value of t. Don't worry. The equation of exists exists of symmetry in this case of what of h at x of this graph h at x is y equal to x plus t now what a t how are we gonna find t it's very simple remember that hyperbola has got two exists of symmetry in terms of equations two equations of exists of symmetry with the first one being with the positive gradient and the second one with negative gradient. Now, how do, how we do notice go to, we've got an equation that has got the negative gradient, you wanna see by minus next to x here. But if it's positive here, that means you wanna use the equation of positive x of positive gradient. Yeah, y equal to x plus p 
plus q we're gonna use this equation but if our x here was negative then we're gonna just put negative here we're gonna just put negative outside the bracket if this x was negative but right now our x is positive for us to find t we ought to find the equation of x of symmetry with the use of positive gradient that's the basic logic behind finding the equation of t you must use this equation here find of finding the x of symmetry so please remember in the exam they may even say that you must draw on the on the on the, on the very same side of the x you must draw uh, the graph of the x of symmetry of this parabola graph yeah. so they might just ask you they might ask you such questions but this is the basic equation you can use to find the equation of x of symmetry for positive gradient but if it was negative you're gonna use you're gonna just put negative here and simplify literally well, i hope we are clear yeah. let us simplify replying the value of t and you must just simplify it and you and after that you're gonna conclude yeah, yes now what is the value of p the value of p is minus one. What is the value of q is positive two. Substitute. You're gonna have x minus one plus two. Okay, guys. So when you when you simplify further, we are going to have x minus one plus plus two. Okay, guys. Therefore, two minus one are like tens. Okay, two minus one is plus one. Okay. Why? 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 Therefore, t r is equals to one. This one. Is the same as this t this x is the same as this x therefore our t is a positive one here that's how you find t very clear ne? yes there are many ways to simplify such problems but this is the best way ne? this is one of the best ways to simplify such problems are we clear clear ne? very simple very 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 simple guys 4.1.5 it says that determine the value of x for which negative 2 is greater than or equal to 1 over x minus 1 very important you must determine the value of x for which negative 2 is smaller than or equal to 1 over x minus 1 so which value of x is this negative 2 smaller than or equal to 1 over x minus 1 now this one it requires you to understand the inequalities yeah? you must understand the inequalities but in this case okay, guys it's, it's simple né? because if ever you've got a number here not zero but any number besides zero né? just simplify the inequality and find the answer né? in most cases it's like that so let's simplify it properly and find the answer here né? you just wanna you want the value of x basically so i will simplify this one the simplest way to simplify it i want to transpose this to this negative two to the right again and we have to zero on our left so we are going to have 1 over x minus 1 is greater than or equal to negative oh it's, it's sorry guys apologies i'm going to transpose this negative 2 to the left and it will be positive 2 again okay? is greater than or equal to 0 right then now i'm going to multiply with my i'm going to find my lcd my LCD in this case is x minus 1 again. My lowest common denominator is x minus 1. I'm going to multiply it with this x minus 1 throughout the equation. So this 1 times x minus 1 is 1 plus 2 times x minus 1 is greater than 0 multiplied by x minus 1. And here this x minus 1 is cancel this x minus 1 and left with 1. 2 times x minus 1, 0 times x minus 1. Okay, guys. 1 plus 2 times x is 2x. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 greater than or equal to 0. 2 and 1 are like terms. 1 minus negative 2 is negative. Negative 1 plus 2x is greater than 0. Then I'm going to transpose this negative 1 to the, to the right. And give, I'm going to be left with 2x on my left is greater than or equal to positive 1. And, and I'm going to divide both sides by 2 by 2. And give, then x here on is going to be smaller than or equal to 1 over 1 over 2 remember this sign here greater than or equal to is going to change again it's going to go opposite way if ever you divide when you divide the sign this sign is going to change in the opposite direction so it's going to be smaller than not bigger than so you're going to change if you when you divide in j on both sides both expression it's going to change the sign from greater than to smaller than 
Please do that. Né? This is how you find this is your, this is your answer basically. Then you are done. The graphs of f at x equal to x squared minus 4x minus 5 and g at x equal to a times 2 to the power x plus q are sketched below. Point bullet number one e and h are the x intercept of f, e and h are x intercept of f, c is the y intercept of f and lies on the asymptote of g. The two graphs intersect at d, the turning point of f. Good 4.2.1 it says that write down the y coordinate of c. Y coordinate of c must write it down now. Y coordinate of C. C is this point. Is our y intercept of graph of f and the graph of f is f at x equal to x squared minus four x minus five and we must write down the y coordinate of our uh, of point C. And the point C lies on this graph here, a parabola. So y intercept, you do what? You let you let x be zero. Let x be equal to zero. Therefore, it's going to be y equal to 0 squared minus 4 times 0 minus 5. Therefore, the answer is negative 5. Our answer is negative 5. I hope we are clear on that, on that one. Ne? These are coordinates of point C. Coordinates of point C are 0 and negative 5. 0 and minus 5. These are coordinates of point C. 4.2.2. It's, it says that determine the coordinates of D. What are coordinates of D? D, the set goatee is a point of the section and D is a turning point. Very important. Turning point of graph of x squared minus 4x. Minus, these are our turning point. Very important, guys. You must know that. Turning point. How do you find turning point in this case? Now, turning point, we can find it in many ways. One of the ways is that we have got a quadratic equation here and it is written in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c and give one of the ways to find the turning point if you have a quadratic equation like this one is by the use of the equation of x of symmetry and x to negative b over 2a this this formula we use it when you find the equation of x of symmetry when they say you must find the equation of x of symmetry you must know that you must that the asymptote must find the x coordinate so you must find the x coordinate. Basically, this is the equation of x of symmetry in a parabola function. But you can use the very same x of symmetry equation to find the turning point, the coordinates of our turning point. Array. x cos negative b over 2a. What is the value of b? It's negative 4. It's parabola. It's quadratic. It's going to be minus negative b is negative 4 over 2 times. What is the value of a? It's 1 times 1. So when you put, it, when you put this on a calculator, it's going to give you 2. Are we clear now? This this is the x coordinate of our turning point. You're gonna use it with the very same x coordinate of our turning point on the y equation here to find the y coordinate. Array. So I'll be f at 2 equal to 2 squared minus 4 times 2 minus 5. When you put this on a calculator, it's gonna give you minus 9. Therefore, the coordinates of d are uh, positive 2 and negative 9. Then you are done with finding the coordinates of our turning point. Are we clear? So it's uh, negative two is two and negative nine. Coordinates of D here, uh, two and minus nine. 4.2.3, it says that uh, determine the value of A and Q. The value of A and Q, where do you find the value of A and Q? From the graph of G at X, okay? G at X, is equals to a times 2 to the power x plus plus q now the graph of exponential has got only one asymptote and the value of q is our asymptote what is the what is the value of asymptote on the graph this is the value of q this is our asymptote on the graph that our asymptote is here and they said that c touches the asymptote of g graph of g and here. come on to one c touches the asymptote of graph of g and this this asymptote is our horizontal asymptote come on to one is our y which means it should be the equation y equal to minus five why because again coordinates of c here are zero and negative five and negative five is our y coordinate therefore this negative five of y coordinate of c is a, is, is a very same value as our 
equation of our asymptote of graph of g. Therefore, y1 is going to be called to negative 5. Subsequently, the value of g is going to be called to negative 5. So it will be negative 5 here. Therefore, y equal to a to times 2 to the power x minus 5. For us to find a here, we can use any coordinates. As long as those coordinates, they touches the graph of g at x. No problem with that. Now, which coordinate touches the graph of g at x? The coordinates of d, that's where the two graphs intersect. Once again, the coordinates of d touches the graph of g at x and also touches the graph of f at x. And you can use the coordinates of d to find the value of a. Right, let, let us use them. Now, to find a, I've got coordinates of d is x and y. Come on, so where I see x, I put in 2. Where I see y, I put in negative 9 to find a. Hurry. Y, I want to take negative 9, negative 9, equal to a times 2 to the power, x, I want to get positive 2, minus 5. Hurry. I'm going to transpose this negative 5 to the left here. It's going to be negative 9 plus 5 is going to be minus 4, equal to a times 2 to the power, 2 to the power 2 is 4. Therefore, I want to be left with a on one side. I divide both sides by 4, by 4. Therefore, a e on is equal to negative 4 times 4 is negative 1. So our equation now has changed. A e on e is negative 1. Therefore, I can just put it negative here. And the value of q is minus, minus 5. Then I'm done with finding a and q. That's how we find the value of a and the value of q for the graph of g and x. Uh, 4.2.4 it says that the write down the range of g write down the range of g now the range of the range of any graph of exponential ne, it's very simple to find the range of exponential graph because the range of exponential graph it will depend on the value of q it's very important. Now, what is the value of Q in this case? The value of Q is equal to negative 5. Therefore, the range, you order for this graph, if uh, the, I get the range is all Y values that are real. All Y values that are real. Okay? Therefore, Y owner should always be smaller than negative 5. Or Y owner should always be smaller than the value of Q. Come on, how to find the range of the graph of exponential function? You must just say that y should always be smaller than the value of q. Now, in this case, the value of q is negative 5. Therefore, y should be smaller than negative 5. Choose any value in j of q in any question of exponential graph. You must just, when you, write, when you want to write the range of any graph of exponential, just say to y is smaller than negative 5. All the time, y should be smaller than that value. Of our asymptote which is in this case is negative five of the value of q please note that that is very important that's so important guys that's so important 4.2.5 4.2.5 4 it says that determine the values or the value of k for which the value of f at x minus k will always be positive Rather, the asymptote must determine the values of k for which the value of f at x minus k will always be positive. It will always be bigger than bigger than zero. That's the that's the importance of that one. Now, when you talk about determining the values of k for which what what will be positive, you must just think of the discriminant, the discriminant, and the asymptote the value of uh, the value of this function f at x minus k will always be positive commas will always be bigger than bigger than zero. Very important. She means you must think of nature of roots in grade 11, the, the derivative of discriminant. I guess about discriminant is b squared minus 4ac should be bigger than zero. Now let us expand this equation. F at x minus k. F at x minus k is the same as what is the value? What is f at x is x squared minus 4x minus 5 and give and minus k they're very important i must include this k here now let us substitute this equation on our discriminant what is the value of b is negative 4 and give negative 4 squared minus 4 times what is the value of a is 1 1 
What is the value of C? C is negative five and give, but there's got we have got a K. K is a is a constant. Now K own and negative five they go intertwined. Which means that they're the same. They're an expression, but it's one term. Negative five minus K is one thing. I'm gonna where I see C I put in negative five minus K bigger than zero. Our aim here is to solve for K. Is to find the values of K. Basically solve for K. That's the Question solve for k. How solve for k? Right. Negative 4 squared is 16. Then negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 5 is positive 20. Negative 4 times negative k is positive 4k greater than 0. Yeah? Then 16 plus 20 is 36. Yeah? Plus 4k bigger than 0. I'm going to transpose this 36 to the, to the right again. Yeah? And we have to 4k greater than negative 36. I divide both sides by 4 by 4. Therefore, k is equal to negative 36 smaller than 4. In the negative 36 divided by 4 is negative 9. I think when you divide, this inequality sign will change to the opposite direction. It's going to be smaller than minus 9. This is the answer. k will be smaller than minus 9. Clear?